confident as the old Rick. There was a certain kind of apprehension, maybe, maybe even a sadness. I don't know how to characterize it. Well, I know he's worried about a lot of things. Laura and Scotty, for one. I can't wait until we have children to worry about. Terry doesn't answer. I'll just have to try again later on. I'm sorry that my mom dragged you into all this, Rick. Hey, don't be silly. You know, Jeff and I have seen each other through a lot of tight spots. There has to be some logical reason why you'd act this way. I just wish... Collected for me. I think she's just as excited as I am about decorating the new house. Oh, okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello, uh, Monica. It, Gail, it's Gail. Well, hi. Hi. Uh, Monica, I just wondered uh, when, when you might be coming to the hospital this morning. Well, Helen and I are just having breakfast, but we should be leaving shortly. Wow. Well, uh, do you know your schedule? I mean, would you have time to stop by my office? Something wrong? Well, there's just a couple of things I'd like to talk to you about. Oh, you want to give me a hint? Well, one of them is very good news, and I have no intention of telling you that on the phone because I want to see your face when I do. And the other? Well, it's about that promise that I made to you. Do you remember? Well, I, uh, I think so. You know, when you and Rick left the hospital together after the quarantine was lifted? Oh, uh, yes, yes. And you asked me not to tell anyone that you left together that night? Yes. Oh. What, what is it? Are you not? Oh, of course not. You said Alan was there with you. Yes, uh, we were just finishing breakfast. Well, then why don't we wait and uh, talk about this a little later when, when we can talk about more freely. Okay. All right. Um, I'll see you later then. Yeah. I don't know exactly. She wanted to discuss a couple of things. She didn't exactly say. Sounds very mysterious. You're not keeping secrets from me, are you? Of course not. You, you know better than that. Of course I do. But you better not try it, because you'll never get away with it. I'm just talking to Lee. Oh, give me my love. All right, Monica sends it out. And thank you, Cynthia, for the gorgeous roses. Well, now, that's the second time you've mentioned those roses. Aren't you going to say anything about the little box that's tied to them? The little box? Well, I, I didn't see any little box. Oh? Well, now, you, you better look again, and if you still don't see it, you call me back right away. Wow. Goodbye. All right, bye. Thank you. Before I say another word, I have to find something. I know, I sense this uh, little elation when I came in here, and I look at your face and the flowers. Let's see a cave. But you, uh, you also mentioned something about the favor I asked you the day after the quarantine was left in. Well, I just wanted you to know that um, before you asked me not to say anything to anyone about that night that you and Rick left the hospital together, I had already told Scotty. Scotty? 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know why. It just kind of came up in natural conversation, you know, not, nothing terribly important. I see. Well, the, the trouble is that Scotty has told Laura, and now Laura is of the opinion that that had something to do with the argument that Leslie and Rick had later that morning. Oh, Monica, have, have I done something awful? No, yeah, it isn't your fault. I just, I've, I've been so worried that something like this would happen and would get, would all get back to Alan. But if you had just called me, you know, before I made that slip to Scotty, but, well, at least he doesn't know when you left the hospital, and Laura doesn't know that either. Well, I'm glad about that. You see, it isn't the only thing, though. The morning that I finally got home, I was in the lobby waiting for the elevator, and Tracy saw me. So now with that, plus Laura's guy knowing that Rick left before midnight, I'm afraid all the pieces are going to start falling into place. I'm... Well, then... Hello. I was just passing by the office and I heard my wife's voice. You sound all excited about something, Monica. What is it? Well? <laughs> you really are excited about something. You can't even get the words out. Come on, Monica. What is it? Show him. Yes. Well, here you go. There. You're the first two to know. Oh, Gail, that <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I wish you the very best, but I think you already have that in me. Oh, thank you, Adam. Well, now I know what you were so excited about. Well, I was expecting it. I, well, I was hoping for it. Yes, yes, I am so excited. And with good reason. I mean, this is cause for celebration, and celebrate we shall. So when's the big party to be? Oh, well, uh, that's up to me, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> but Malik and I are not forgetting that... You and Lee were such an important part of our wedding party, and this will give us a chance to return the favor. As a matter of fact, I think that we insist on it, don't we, darling? Well, sure, of course. And as an old married doctor, I heartily prescribe marriage as an ideal way of life. And to celebrate the Quartermains, I'm going to plan a party, but a party to end all parties <laughs> as soon as Lee is well enough to enjoy it. Oh, Alan, well, this is really turning into quite some morning for yes, me. So it should be. I don't know two people more compatible than you and Lee. Except possibly Monica and myself. Now, my darling girl, about this party, who are we going to ask? Well, um, the Taylors, Jean and Gary Lansing, Susan. Rick and Leslie. Well, I, Alan. Well, well, nothing. They've turned down every invitation we've made to them lately, and this is one that they can't refuse. Yes, you're right. And we will invite Laura and Scotty, and then they have absolutely no excuse whatsoever to fall back on. Of course. Well... At least this clears up that mysterious phone call this morning. Oh, I'm sorry, Alan. I didn't mean to sound mysterious. For one awful moment there, I started to think that my wife was starting to keep secrets from me again. Uh, yeah, I am on my way over to Diana's to tell her the news. Oh, say hi to for me. Yes, I will. You're kind of tired. Oh, uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> it's been a hectic day. And there's going to be no let-up because Rick and I have an incredible schedule uh, for surgery in the next several weeks. It's not just the fatigue that's showing, though, is it? You know me very well. I think so. What is it, really, Monica? I'm worried about Alan and this party he's talking about. I don't know how to turn him off from insisting that Rick and Leslie be invited. I don't understand. I mean, it's just a social gathering. What's wrong with that? Well, Leslie had a talk with me. And she wants uh, me to put a stop to any kind of those situations, social or otherwise. Why? Yes. She doesn't want to make excuses to Alan anymore. She says the problem is mine, and she's not going to be made to suffer any more than she already has. Monica, are you telling me that Leslie knows about you and Rick, what, what happened that night uh, when you went off together after the quarantine was lifted? Yes. Well, how in the world did she find out? Rick told her. Well, what exactly did he tell her? The truth. But <laughs> that was enough to send her out of the house for a day and a half. I thought you told me that nothing happened that night. Nothing did happen, Gail. But, I mean, Rick was honest with her, and you know Rick. I mean, 
He told her that he and I were together. Did Rick tell you all this? Yes. And then Laura told me that Rick and Leslie are now occupying separate bedrooms. Oh, Monica, I'm sorry. So am I. I just wish that I could undo the whole thing. Well, now, now I understand why you've been so worried about Alan. Yes. And he's, I mean, he's arranging the same kind of situation that Leslie warned me about. As if I didn't have enough problems trying to keep him from seeing the guilt I feel every time we're together. And what are you going to do? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if Alan keeps pressing Leslie to accept an invitation to the party, he, he could go too far and Leslie would just, I don't know, maybe she'd say something to him and it would tip the whole thing. I wish there was some way I could help. You can't. It's mine. I'm all alone in this one. I'm alone and I'm scared. <laughs> 